covered this once, but I want to cover it again. Here's a few expectations for people going through the disability approval process. Um, and I, I am big on expectations. Uh, we have you authorize the expectations as I showed you, but um, how do I say this nicely? People forget about the expectations. <laughs> um, and one of the things is uh, the approval rate is these are the national averages um, and they vary a little bit, but the initial application national average is 36%. I know what ours are internally, it's significantly different, but I'm just sharing with you what the, the averages are. Reconsideration, 13%. So somebody, people come to us and they, they're like at reconsideration and they get denied. And they're like, yeah, I mean, that's actually a good thing. Now we can get on to the next step where we have better odds. It's like, you know, um, so uh, in the hearing is, is where there is a significant opportunity. If your case gets denied at hearing, uh, we'll definitely have it evaluated um, both internally, but externally by others who do this specific uh, level of appeals. Um, and if it can be advanced and taken on to the next level of appeal, um, then we will advise you uh, of that. That's the appeals council and federal appeal. Um, so the expectations are cover the statistical, the wait times, where the information is gathered from, again, how to communicate with us. Um, just uh, this is a this is a working like a business legal process. Uh, so just encourage you to stay um, and keep in mind what the um, expectations are. And frankly, there is no it's not a quick fix, social security disability benefits. Um, you know, the time of this recording, the average wait time for an initial decision is 233 days. Yeah, there's some states like Vermont, where I'm at, which are much better, um, but it's still, um, you know, it, it, it does take a while. The next thing that I want to revisit is um, working. And the, I look at this on a really on a case by case basis. If you are applying for disability, you are attempting to prove to Social Security that you cannot work. So really any work that you do can be detrimental to your case. But fact is, some people just need to, they need to survive. So what's the delicate balance for that? Um, and it really depends. I mean, if you're somebody that is over 50, I'll go back to the truck driver with 17 years. And, um, you know, he's doing, um, you know, something super part time where he's, you know, at the local school and he's sitting in a chair and he's uh, scoring a basketball game and he's getting paid a little bit of money to do that. Um, that's different than, um, you know, cause it's, you, you might be earning, let's say it's four or $500 a month doing that or whatever it is. It's into the hobby range. And with his situation, need to prove that he cannot drive truck. So that's still viable. If it's somebody that is the 45 year old um, and they're doing some work, that's really detrimental because you're trying to prove that you can't do any work. And it puts social security in a situation where they can just open the argument and say, okay, with better treatment, uh, with a different job, with accommodations, then you can work. Now, <clears throat> so I'll let you filter that information um, as you see fit. But again, the best is to really uh, not work, uh, ideally. Um, but I am a proponent of work for people that are disability recipients. And one of the things that we do here at the Disability Digest is not only is our staff uh, 
partly a disability recipients out of all of our staff. It's always been that way since 2007. Um, but we help people get back to work. And once you're approved, it's a different situation. You can earn um, at the time of this uh, recording up to $1,010 a month um, every month and keep your benefits. Um, ideally a little bit below that, like 20% below that. Um, but you're approved and you're not working full time and you're working below the allowed amount. Uh, that's an entirely different topic. So in looking at that, what I encourage people to do, and a lot of people say, well, listen, I, you know, I understand I can't work now or I won't work now, but to use this as kind of a setup time, because I think one of the things for general help is, you want to be active, you want to have a sense of purpose, and maybe it's work, maybe it's volunteering, but doing something rather than grabbing the remote and sitting on the couch after you're approved um, is helpful. So that's that's my take on it. Um, and, you know, if you've been through all of this at this point and you're still kind of like, well, does this really work? I don't know. Um, I would encourage you to go back over in the beginning. I showed you our YouTube channel. Um, you know, we keep... 80 to 90 success stories in rotation in here of people that different ages, different backgrounds. Some have done it on their own. Some have used us in addition to a different representative. Um, you know, so just different stories in here so that you can, uh, you know, ideally relate um, and be inspired.